Hi, Alan Stratton from Meswood Turns. Recently I attended SWAT and many presentations during that. One in particular impressed me was the manta ray. It's essentially a winged bowl and box with some carved away. Great project by the way. And the guys there challenged me to do one in a video here. Well, I'm not quite ready because there's other things happening that I need to take care of. In particular, the Christmas ornament challenge is coming up and I'd like to deploy a similar project to what I saw in the manta ray and what I saw in last year's in this ornament. So this is essentially a uh, colored blank on the top and other colored on the bottom. It's uh, dyed laminated birch and then a, a finial in the, in the middle to put it all together. So this is essentially a winged ornament and very similar to the manta ray, but I decided to kick it off with that. As for the challenge, as w in addition to the grand prizes, I'm arranging special uh, something for everyone from the sponsoring vendors for everyone who enters their ornament to the challenge. Discounts or coupons, it will be great. Remember the key date is to get your ornament to me during the month of November. Inspiration and in past uh, pictures on ornamentchallenge.com and that's where you will be entering your picture of your ornament this year. So for now, let's turn this one and get ready. For this project, I found two pieces of frog blanks. This is colored laminated birch veneer. I laminated a piece of quarter inch maple between the pieces. Then I marked out an equilateral triangle and found the center. I drilled a 1 8 inch hole completely through the blank to mark the same center on both sides. Then using that hole as a guide, drilled a 5 8 inch hole about 3 8 inch in on each side and enlarged the hole, the through hole, to 1 quarter inch. Now I have mounted the blank to a pen mandrel set. The headstock side is a Morse taper and a quarter inch pin. The tailstock side is a live center also with a quarter inch pin. The wood is pressed between the two ends. However, this setup slipped a lot and I had to be exceptionally gentle. Next time I will use something different. Starting with the parting tool, I gradually whittle down the middle, then switch to a spindle scraper. I want to be very gentle and avoid chipping. With the slippage, this took a lot longer, but gradually I cut out a V-groove from the corners to the middle. Then sand and apply shellac. This is one piece that I may not be able to return to a previous mount for sanding. Best to do it now. Some time ago, I mounted a T-nut to the underside of one of my faceplates. I have mounted the piece with a quarter inch bolt. The bolt head fits inside the 5 8 inch hole I drilled previously. A larger hole would have enabled tightening with a wrench, but that was not needed this time. Now to carefully hollow this side with a spindle gouge. The challenge is to keep the wall thickness consistent throughout the exposed side. Another challenge is the interrupted cut as the corners whip around. Yet another challenge is to keep the cut consistent between cutting air and cutting wood. Remember that bolt in the middle? Yes, I have to avoid that also. After sanding the middle under power and the corners by hand, I can apply shellac to this area. To reverse the mount, I inserted a spacer between the faceplate and the wood, since this side is now concave and will not sit flat like the other side. Same challenges as the other side. I finish up with a round nose scraper. Very light cuts required.
Again, after sanding the middle under power and the corners by hand, I can apply shellac to this area. For the finials, I selected a piece of hazelnut pruned from my yard. This wood is dry. It is mounted in the long nose jaws. I start with the top finial, which will be very short. First, I need to make sure I have a tenon to fit the body. I work it down with the sharpened end wrenches, then go for a final fitting with the usual test, trim, test, trim routine. Once it fits, I can move down to shape the top finial with a skew. A bit of sanding, it does not take much. A burn line will accent nicely against the very light wood. Then a coat of shellac before parting it off. I'll drill and sand off the tip a bit later. With the hazelnut still in the chuck, I can start the bottom finial. This is the same process, at least to start with. That is, to cut a mounting tenon. This time I reduce the diameter with a parting tool. This gives a nice flat surface and is nice to use in this tight space. Then the sharp end and wrenches. Once the tenon fits the body, I proceed to shape this finial again with my skew. I leave the wood diameter larger than required to keep it strong for as long as possible. This prevents a nasty break in the thin wood. After sanding, again some burn lines for accent followed by the final shellacking. So, here is my first ornament for this season, inspired by last year's ornaments and swat. It is not a project for a new turner to do right now, but is still something to work towards. Meanwhile, look for what inspires you for this year's Christmas ornament challenge coming in November. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, and tell your friends about my videos. I appreciate your comments and questions. Every week I add a new wood turning video to my website. Always, please wear your full face shield anytime the lathe is running. A face shield saved my life and it can save yours. If you use it, I'll be able to see you again next week. If you don't use it, my condolences to your family.